Hello everyone. Today we are quilting and that means that this quilt is almost done. <laughs> I am going to be attaching the binding to this quilt as I go along and I've had several people here on YouTube and over on Facebook ask me how I do that and so I thought I would bring you along for the ride today. Show you step by step how to attach your binding while you're quilting and we are featuring a Mr. Bobbins today. Mr. Bobbins is a Nolting Pro Series long arm. If you're in the market, let me just say I love Nolting. Their customer service is awesome. They are super friendly and helpful. Uh, they're here in the U.S. You call them and you have a rep on the phone who's going to walk you through any issues that you might have. And let me just say issues that I've had with this machine have always been because it was something that I was doing wrong. <laughs> not with my machine and so I highly recommend Nolting. Again, I'm going to put their website in the description box below. I'm ready to go ahead and get started. Uh, I have the quilt loaded on my frame. Off camera, I'm going to do a basting stitch around the perimeter of my quilt and that just holds all the layers together and keeps everything in place. Then I'm going to go through and uh, trim any loose strings and tidy up the quilt top to make sure I'm not quilting over anything I'm not supposed to be quilting over. And then I'm going to do the first pass of this quilt. And uh, I usually like to quilt with music. And so I'm going to do that off camera and then we're going to come back and focus on the binding together. Let's get started. I just got done quilting the first pass on my quilt. We're ready to go ahead and attach the binding now and I wanted to mention one thing to you about the basting. If you are attaching your binding to your quilt with your long arm, usually it's pretty standard that we baste our quilt around the edge with a quarter inch seam. If I'm attaching my binding, I like to come in a little shy of a quarter of an inch and so that basting stitch is hidden underneath of my binding. I don't want to see any of that basting stitch on the other side of my binding when I have flipped my binding to the back. So to hide that we will come in shy of a quarter of an inch and when we attach our binding we will attach our binding at the quarter inch mark. We're ready to go ahead and get started. You will take both ends of your binding and put them together and go through all of your binding until you find the center point. Mark your center point with a pin, just like so. I'm going to flip you down and I'm going to show you how to get started. You might hear my floor squeaking around as I move. <laughs> my floor is squeaky. And unfortunately, this is about as close as I can bring you, so I hope that you can see okay. This blue pin here mark represents the center of my quilt. I'm going to take my binding that I've marked with the pin and we're going to match that up the raw edge of our binding to the raw edge of our quilt just like that and we're going to go ahead and pin that in place just to keep it nice and secure while we get set up. You can do it pin, cooperate. It doesn't want to cooperate. Nope, it's not going to cooperate. It's much easier to do it that way. <laughs> I would tell you, these videos some days go easily and some days they do not uh, like to play nice with me. But we're going to make it work today. So I have that pinned in place and we're ready to go ahead and bring our machine over. This is when we will be stitching a quarter inch away from, oh, I have strings everywhere. Hold on a second. A quarter inch away from the edge of our quilt. All right, and it's fairly simple to do with the foot of our machine. This is actually, <laughs> this is actually a touching foot, but the distance is still the same 
between where the needle comes into the quilt and the edge of the foot is a quarter inch. I'm attached to my uh, couching foot. I love doing couching and Dan was at the uh, Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival and he gifted me this couching foot. It has a bigger hole at the bottom because he watched my YouTube channel and my video about couching and he responded. See, see how awesome Nolting is? And so I'm testing this foot out for him in my spare time. <laughs> so, uh, let's get back on track. Where was I? Okay, yes. The needle comes down into the center of this foot and the distance is a quarter inch. So we know that if we line up the edge of this foot and stitch along, that's going to be a quarter of an inch. What we have to do is get all of our binding situated. So now that we've divided it in half, one half will go to the left and one half will go to the right. And while I wrestle around with that, <laughs> see how long this binding is? While I wrestle around with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get set up to show you what to do next. I'm going to bring you in at this angle so hopefully my hands don't get in the way. I imagine some parts they will so my apologies in advance. <laughs> if you have a hard time doing a straight edge uh, I do recommend a long arm roller. They are thicker than your normal template plastics and uh, this could guide you to give you a straight line across the top of your quilt. I'm going to go ahead and Secure my thread into my quilt, bring up the bobbin thread, and lock those stitches in place, and we are ready to go ahead and start. I will do one side, go to the corner, and then come down. When we get to the corner, I'm going to stop and move you closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And uh, it really, it is as simple as that. We do one side, we do that corner, and we come down as far as we can on the right. We cut our strings, and then we start back here in the middle, go to the left, do our corner, and come back down. So, let's go ahead and get started. I can remove that pin now. Okay, unfortunately, I do think my hands are going to get in the way. We are getting close to the edge of our quilt. Just like doing normal traditional binding, we will do a mitered corner here in, the, in this corner. And when we get a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt, we're going to go diagonally up and off of the quilt. There's our quarter inch mark. I'm going to go ahead and go up and off of the quilt. I'm just going to move over here out of the way so I can manipulate my binding. Again, we're doing the mitered corner. And so we're going to take our binding. This is always the confusing part for everyone. <laughs> we are going to take the raw edge and bring it 
straight in line with the edge of our quilt, just like we normally do. I like to kind of finger press that little crease there. And then holding everything in place, we're going to bring it back down and create our mitered corner. We're going to line up the raw edges of our quilt again. And I'm going to hold that in place and carefully and slowly bring the machine back over a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt. I'm hoping that you can see that. I'm going to catch that binding underneath the foot and I'm just going to come in and do a couple of stitches, lower the needle and stop for a second. That way I can adjust all of this binding and come straight down and bind this side of the quilt. All right, here we are in the center again. I'm gonna bring up my bobbin thread, just like before. Lock those stitches in place. And we're ready to go ahead and stitch the left side of our binding into that corner. And again, because the corners can be confusing, I will bring you in closer and show you that corner as well. All right, here we are at the edge of the quilt. I've stopped a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt and we're just gonna quilt or stitch right off of the edge and move out of the way. Now we're ready to do our corner again. We are taking the binding and we are going to form the mitered corner just by taking the raw edge and matching it up straight with the raw edge of the quilt. That gives us a nice mitered crease here and I'm going to finger press that in place. I'm going to hold everything in place while I bring the binding back down. Just like that. And we're just going to check and make sure everything is straight. Everything looks really good. I'm going to hold that in place. Bring the machine back over very carefully. Make sure the binding is up underneath of the foot. Come in and just take a few stitches. Put the needle down and adjust the rest of this binding so we can stitch straight down.
here we are. Our first pass is quilted and our binding is attached to the top. Our first two corners are done and we've started coming down the sides. One thing to keep in mind if you are going to attach your binding this way is that you will have to contend with your two binding tails along the way. The good news is, is it gets shorter and shorter the further along you go. <laughs> but you want to make sure that you do not get this tangled up somehow underneath your quilt and that you end up quilting your binding to the back side of your quilt. So just keep that in mind. Pay attention to where your binding tails are at all times. <laughs> and as you advance, just pull them off to the side and then quilt your quilt and then bring them back up and attach your binding. I'm going to go ahead and advance my quilt. I might show a couple pictures of what that actually looks like in a little slideshow. Then I'm going to baste and quilt the next pass and then probably bring you back in to do one more um, demonstration of attaching the binding to the sides and then we'll do the corners together and I'll show you how I finish up at the end. I know this angle is a little awkward, but I didn't want the handle to get in the way this time. So you can see how I pull the binding down on the side and we're going to stitch this down. This is my binding tail. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back onto the quilt. I have just finished quilting this pass of my quilt. I'm just going to bring the needle off of the quilt just to the side of the quilt so I can get my binding ready, bring it down the side of the quilt, lining up the raw edges, making sure everything is nice and straight. I'll move the machine back up to where we have left off with the stitching. And I'll continue there and come on down. I guess now is a good time to tell you I'm using a stitch length of 12 to do my quilting and my binding. And I'm using the YLI uh, Universal Quilting Thread today that is very strong and durable for t-shirt quilts. I hardly ever 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 get any thread breakage with this thread and it comes in uh, umpteen million different colors and so I love that thread for t-shirt quilts. Now we're just going to stitch this down a quarter of an inch away from the end of our quilt. And the sides of our quilts go by very quickly with the binding part. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this quilt. I'll meet you back at the bottom corners. All right, our quilting is done on this last pass and we are down at the right hand corner. Again, I'm going to come straight down the right side. Remembering to stop a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt. Go off of the quilt and then I'm going to move out of the way. 
we're going to take and miter our corner. Finger press that crease. Hold everything in place. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way. And line everything up nice and straight. Come back to this corner. Come on to the edge of the quilt. And we're going to stop. Our fabric is underneath the presser foot. Now we're going to go straight across and I'm going to stop before I get in the middle. I like to leave about a 12 inch gap with my binding and I'll do it on the other side as well. Again, leaving the 12 inch gap, I'll show you when we get to that part because I like to take my quilt off the frame, sew my binding together and then finish it off. And so we're gonna go straight across. That seems to be the best view. I will be right there. Hopefully, maybe you can start seeing me again. This is where I left off coming in from the right side. We're going to leave that extra binding there. I'm going to stop about right here with the left side of the binding. We're going to leave this gap because I will end up finishing this off by sewing this together and then sewing that down to the quilt with my sewing machine. So I like to leave about 12 inches. That gives me a good comfortable working room at the sewing machine to manipulate, trim, and sew that binding together. We're going to finish coming over and lock our stitches. Right about there. I'm going to do a few stitches just to lock that in place. We'll bring up the bobbin thread and we're going to call this a day. So you can see if you put your binding on while you're quilting everything, it kind of kills two birds at once, two birds with one stone. <laughs> it's been a long day. Oh, once I trim this and take the quilt off of the frame, I don't have to sit at the machine and attach my binding. Now all I have to do is trim this, sew this together, attach it to the quilt just in this section here, and then I'm ready to flip this over and stitch it to the back and I'm done. So I hope that you have found this helpful. If you have questions, I would love to help you. You can ask them down below in the comment section. And uh, you could also jump over to Facebook and message me there. I would love to help you there as well. Thank you all for watching. And um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out the rest of my videos, you guys. I have some fun giveaways, some fun free gifts. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye.